Good morning and welcome to worship with Washington Park United Methodist Church. Your worship leaders and I actually met on Saturday morning to pre-record this worship service um, with just a little bit of trepidation for tomorrow morning and wanting everyone to be safe um, with the big snowstorm coming. Um, but rest assured that your worship leaders, your pastors, me and Reverend Jamie Lee are joining you live this morning to be in community and to share worship. A few announcements this morning to let you know about. We are just a little bit over halfway through Lent. That means we need to start getting ready for Holy Week. And the kickoff to Holy Week is Palm Sunday. We're going to need you to make a homemade palm, or even if you have a palm frondy looking plant or tree at home, to take a picture of you and your family, email the, those to me, pastor at washparkumc.org, so that we can celebrate with a virtual palm parade on Sunday, March 28th. Make sure that you visit our website, washparkumc.org, for all of our Lenten activities and all the things happening in the life of our church. A couple of things concerning children's ministry. Miss Sherry wanted to make sure that I let all of you know that our children are invited to a Sunday school craft Zoom call on Thursday, April 1st, no foolin' at 4.30 p.m., um, connect with Miss Sherry if you want the craft supplies for that and join her for that call. And also Miss Sherry and the Children's Ministry will be offering Easter morning goodie bags for all of our kids, but you've got to sign up. So if that's something you'd be interested in um, having delivered to your home, um, to your child at home, please connect with Miss Sherry, Children's Ministry at washparkumc.org. We are so glad that you're with us. We hope that you'll let us know that you're here in the chat feature of the YouTube or Facebook Live video. Um, or you can always email Reverend Jamie Lee or me or the office to let us know you're worshiping with us. We pray that you have a powerful experience of God as we worship together today. Let us continue with worship with singing. In the face of changing ways Who will lead the pilgrim people Wandering in their separate ways Got a rainbow fiery pillar Leading where the eagles soar We are people, ours a journey Now and ever, now and ever Now and ever more and Stand a world divided by our own self seeking steam. Grant that we, your global village, might envision wider dreams. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar. We are people out the journey. Welcome to prayer time at Wash Park. If you have any prayers that you would like to share with us, your pastors, with the prayer team, or with the congregation at large, please be sure to send Reverend Sandy or myself an email, or check out our online prayer card at washparkumc.org. You can also find Reverend Sandy and my own emails there as well. During this time, I would like you to take a moment 
and ponder what has been resting in your heart this week. Consider the highs and the lows, the joys and the worries. And I want you to take a moment and lift them up, be it out loud or silently, sharing them with a human, a pet, or just the Holy Spirit. Take a moment and share. Now is the time in our service where we sing our hymn of prayer. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Almighty God, our hearts are troubled and our minds are in confusion. We have separated ourselves from your peace by attempting to shape our own path. But we have found that path to be lonely. We have stumbled and fallen and with humility we cry to you. Hear us once again. Forgive us our boldness. Forgive us our self-reliance. Forgive us. Thank you, God, for allowing us yet another chance to walk the true path where the light is good and the friendship is warm. Guide us with your grace. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. Your creator God and your redeemer Christ have given you the opportunity to begin again with every new day to begin again and again. Today, I would like to lead you in a prayer for the anniversary of one year living in a pandemic, as written by the SALT Project. Good Shepherd, thank you for walking with us through this valley of the shadow of death, through the suffering, the anxiety, the loneliness, the boredom, the longing for closeness, and the longing for personal space, the confusion and fear, the impatience and hope, the good days and the bad. Forgive us for our suspicions of each other, the ways that this ordeal has made us more divided as a country and as a world. Help us bridge our differences and come together, even as we are physically distant. Thank you for all the ways, large and small, that this ordeal has strengthened us as a community. The acts of kindness, the new ways of doing things, the support we've offered and received. Forgive us for the inequities this pandemic has exposed. Kindle our hearts a new commitment for justice as we build and rebuild our community together. Keep us ever mindful of those most in need. 
We pray especially for those of us who have lost loved ones, lost jobs, lost hope. Let us be a good com community and a good company, even from afar, good neighbors and good friends. We pray especially for those on the front lines of the pandemic, for all who are in harm's way. Gentle God, we ask that you continue to keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this day. Walk with those whose bodies are holding memories of sickness, of trauma, of isolation. God of life and hope, lift our spirits as we dare to look ahead, dare to hope and to dream about the new world to come. Strengthen our efforts, deepen our wisdom, so we might hasten that day. And until that day, keep our eyes and our hearts open to the signs of hope and life all around us. For all of these things and more, gentle God, we give you thanks and praise in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This, this is where children belong. Welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. This, this is where children belong. Welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. So sorry, this silly time change throws me off every time. I mean, I, I know it's coming up. I remember spring forward, spring forward. It's probably one of my least favorite days of the year because I don't like getting up in the morning. So, pardon me, I'm just gonna go ahead and have my breakfast here. Oh, besides it being spring forward, what else is coming up? Hmm, let's see, we've got We've, oh, we've got St. Patrick's Day on Thursday. That's why I have me Lucky Charms. But you know what I think is really kind of fun about Lucky Charms is the marshmallows. I really don't like to eat the marshmallows. They're not my favorite. I'm sure as a kid I did. But I just love looking at all the different colors of the marshmallows and what they mean. And I was thinking of them as I was doing the rest of my shopping after I bought these because it is St. Patrick's Day and Lucky Charms are fun to have. But I was just thinking about the different rainbows and the clovers and the hearts and the horseshoes. All these lucky, lucky things that are things that they make noted in the Bible. I wonder how many of you think when you're eating a bowl of Lucky Charms and you're eating the marshmallows, you're thinking of the Bible. Probably not too many of you, but I'm going to point it out, okay? So bear with me. We have a rainbow. Now I know Reverend Sandy talked about the rainbow a couple weeks ago in her sermon. But a rainbow, a symbol of God's promise. And they talk about that in Genesis 9, 17. When he was speaking to Noah and making that covenant, that promise. Pretty cool. And let's see. Let me see if I can find a rainbow. Ooh, I found one right away. Hmm. Here's a rainbow marshmallow. Mm. Still awful. Yeah, yeah. Also, 
I didn't even know this until I read this on the box. Did you know that Lucky Charms have balloons? I didn't know that that green blob was supposed to be a balloon. I thought it was like a clover or just a circle, but it's supposed to be a balloon. And a balloon is reminds me of the Bible verse in Psalms. He lifts up our burdens. Up, 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 and floats away. But we're not gonna let that float away. We're gonna anchor it. Also, hmm, I don't have a whole lot of marshmallows in this bunch. Oh, here's a balloon. Actually, this balloon is red. And yes, it looks like a blob. Also, we have hearts in there. And I'm sure everybody recognizes the hearts that are in Lucky Charms. Like, I feel like they're everywhere. I feel like that's all my bowl is full of, but heart. His is a abounding love. That's from Exodus. Abounding love. And we all know that there's stars because if you listen to the commercial, you hear old leprechaun guy here saying about the stars and the rainbow. But in Psalms, he talks about stars. He is so big, he knows the name of the stars, and he knows your name and my name. Pretty spectacular. And then we have our moon, our last charm, our last marshmallow. He made the moon for the seasons, and the sun knows the place of its setting. Psalms. So when you kind of think about some of these fantastic things that are considered lucky charms that people will have, like rabbit, a rabbit's foot or the horseshoe is one thing mentioned in there. Just remember that if you have God in your life and Christ in your heart, you're already very lucky. Let's end in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for the abounding love that you lift our burdens, that you made the stars and the heavens and the earth all for us, and we are your greatest creation. Amen. perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord, your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet, covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Will you pray with me? Holy God, send your spirit upon us. As your scripture has been read and your word is proclaimed, let us hear with joy what it is you have to say to us this day. Amen. This weekend's impending snowstorm, which on Saturday morning, we're still not sure if it's going to happen, but we'll see, um, has made me think about some of the places that I've lived in my pastoral career. For three years, we lived in the mountains, and my Gilpin County friends are right now expecting three feet or more of snow this weekend. And it reminded me of one snowstorm that we had when we lived up there that drifted all the way to the tops of the windows in my Honda Civic. So it was, it was deep. Or it makes me remember our years of living in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where we lived out in the country on two and a half acres of just wide open prairie no trees or anything to stop the blowing snow. I remember one visit that our family made down to Loveland, Colorado um, to see my parents at the time they were living there. And we had to drive back up to Cheyenne in treacherous weather. For whatever reason, we had two cars there. So Jimbo was in his truck and he was leading the way. As we crossed the Wyoming border and came to Terry Ranch Road exit off of I-25, um, in normal weather, it seemed like such a benign stretch of road, straight, steady, flat. But with the wind blowing, blinding snow at 50 miles an hour, it felt terribly curvy and hilly and dangerous. It felt like I was sliding off the road or that the wind was trying to push or pull me into a ditch. And the only thing that kept me going were the lights, the taillights of Jimbo's truck in front of me. Slow, steady, reassuring. During this 2021 Lenten season, we've been looking at the different promises or covenants that God has offered to God's people. We remember that the sign of the Noahic covenant is the rainbow. Well, oh, rainbow over here. And that was a sign that God promised never to destroy the world in flood again. Last week, we talked about the Abrahamic covenant, 
that God promises home, family, and blessing. And the sign of that covenant was circumcision. And today we look at the Mosaic Covenant. Now, the Mosaic Covenant is much more complex than the ones previous. The Mosaic Covenant, which is sealed with Moses during his time on Mount Sinai, actually encompasses the exodus out of Egypt and the giving of the law. You actually need the first five whole books of the Bible, um, of the Old Testament, the the Torah or the Pentateuch, to understand the collective nature of the Mosaic Covenant. It's very multifaceted. But at the center of it all is God's giving of the law. When we hear the Ten Commandments, as Holly so beautifully read to us just a minute ago, they seem powerful and final. The law God commands. But we need to remember that actually God gave many more commandments or laws. Um, Some of us are participating in a Linton study together, and the author of the book that we're reading, Amy Jill Levine, says that there are 613 commandments. So the Ten Commandments are actually just the first ten. But their primacy of place does lift them as vitally important. So how are we supposed to interpret these commandments as modern people with our own societal laws and rules? Should we post them in courthouses and in schools and watch out for commandment breakers so that we can punish them? Walter Brueggemann, one of my favorite Old Testament scholars, says that the Ten Commandments are so important because they are the proclamation of freedom and emancipation to the Israelites. He says that the first three commandments, if we're looking at the Ten, The first three named the emancipatory God. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord of the Exodus. I am the God who emancipated you. I am the Lord of new promises. This God who is establishing this covenant is different from Pharaoh in Egypt. God's trying to set God's self apart. And this God cares for you and wants you to be free. The middle commandments, commandments four and five, I suppose, say to honor God and to honor the Sabbath. And then with this revolutionary new strategy that God is presenting to the people, Brueggemann emphasizes that the last five commandments are to take the neighbor with utmost seriousness. So the last five commandments are all about the neighbor and treating neighbors with legitimacy and dignity and viability and especially disadvantaged neighbors, not to violate the neighbor for the sake of greed. The Ten Commandments, then, are really a set of guiding principles for how to be in community with God and with neighbor. They are sacred, important boundaries for how we treat God and others. And at the center of this is God's love for us. So much so that God wants us to love each other, to be guides for each other, leading each other through the treacherous journeys of life. I spent some time considering this idea of being guiding light for each other this past week as I put together the following video.
weary traveler searching for the way to go. Stranger, heavy hearted, longing for some. remained strong, 
connected in so many ways, even if not in person for an hour on Sunday mornings. Because of you, I am better, a better pastor, a better person. Because of our relationships with each other, we are all richer. And that centers us in the love of God. For after all, we know that eventually Jesus will proclaim to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself as the greatest of all commandments. Thank you, friends for continuing to be light for each other on the journey. I pray these have been the words of the Lord for us this day. Amen. I invite you to pray our offering prayer with me. God, in response to the love you have given to us, we offer here what we have, what we do, and even more who we are for the sake of all people. Amen.
cannot be connected with hands, let us be connected with hearts. And as you go from this worship, may the love of God, the grace and peace of Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and forever. Amen. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require?